start the recording here and then we can go ahead and get started for the first minute or so i'm looking for something to talk about um, i'm not going to be talking too much And pretty good bubbles. Make sure that you're not shooting into into the Zarya enemy Zarya bubble, but besides that, nothing's happened so far. All right. Um. All right. So we're a minute and thirty seconds into the game. I think this is just a good time to go over this. Uh, now, so far between our right clicks and left clicks, we seem to be right clicking very, very often, and at ranges where I probably would say that we're not going to want to use it. So, uh, in general, when it comes to the difference between right click and left click, um, left click is pretty much is going to be your more consistent, higher damage output source. But right click is going to be more bursty, but then it also allows you to go for ranges. So when you want to be left clicking is anytime you're within left click range, it, which is about 15 meters or so here. Um, and you can tell that just by, you know, by getting the hit markers or the sound or whatever, or you see that you're killing them. Um, but anything past that, when we can't do damage, then we're right clicking. And then if we're within this, we want to make sure we're just left clicking. But the other time we can use it is to burst somebody down so for example like since right click does a big burst of damage we can do a whole lot of damage when they're low hp especially if we have uh you know higher energy here but we can right click melee and burst down their health which means that they die a lot faster which means that you know they have less time to get healed less time to get away from you less time to use shielding and tanking so that's just gonna be a good way but we seem to be like kind of hovering within this distance and just continuously right clicking from here when that's just a lot less efficient and a lot you're not really going to be doing as much damage like this and it's not really going to be good for you so we just want to make sure that when whenever it's an option we're just using left click as a as our kind of default base damage and then right clicking if we're too far and then right clicking to burst somebody down which is, which when you're higher energy is going to be when they're like half health right so coming back into that you can and to see that uh, we're in Blizzard World, right? Yep. One minute thirty. Welcome to Blizzard. Okay, so you see. Actually, let's go back a little bit just so you can see it. So that's out of sight of the range. A okay, right click. A okay, right click. A okay, right click. Right click. Right. So it's just a lot of right clicks when it, they're kind of within range and they're not low and um, that, that's just ranges where left clicks just going to be doing a whole lot more for you. Alright. Besides so that, really good bubbles so far to start us off. Okay, so rather than going main, it's probably a good idea that we go high ground for a few different reasons here. First off, this can help us secure high ground from them and get the high ground advantage. Now, high ground in general, you know, you're you're a Masters player, so I assume that you get it, but high ground is good, right? whoop de doo So, but that also means that it's good for the enemy team as well. So even if we don't directly benefit from high ground, we want to be able to take it away from the enemy team, so we don't want to give them that advantage. The second thing is it's probably just going to be like an easier place to get damage from this is where they're probably going to be going as you can see here they have their entire team coming high ground so if we went high ground we'd be getting better bubbles off we'd be doing more damage we'd be doing more things from here so i think rotating main was just kind of not the best idea when we probably should have been coming right uh, top left here which helps us secure high ground takes away from them gets us good energy as in between rounds and get us gets us damage in whereas going main here didn't really do much for us so just look to take high ground when it's an option Hey, 
My ultimate is charging. Yep, and then that results in our... Uh, we were at like 90 energy during the last fight, but now that just results in our energy deteriorating in between fights. We always want to, in between fights, try to keep our energy maintained so that when we're coming into this fight, we're coming in with like 60 uh, plus energy, right? We're coming in with a lot of energy so that we're not needing to get that back online because very obviously, you know, energy is how you do things. When you have 100 energy, you're doing a lot more than when you're at 26. So we want to be coming into the fight with a lot of energy, which means that in between fights, we want to make sure that we're maintaining that energy, getting spam damage pumped into us so that we can um, keep it up. But, but here we're coming into this fight at 26 energy, which isn't going to be good, very good for us, which is just resulting from going main rather than going left. Don't spend too much time shooting at bubbles if it's if they've like already gone. Like it's kind of the same thing as like don't shoot at a lamp if nobody's in the lamp. Don't shoot at you know the, on ashes. I have to tell them like um, don't shoot at your dynamite if your dynamite's nowhere near people. If this bubble's not protecting anybody, then there's no use shooting at it. It's just a waste of time when we could be looking for pro uh, projected bubble. We could be looking to damage other people. Right? It's just a waste of time. So we want to look to do other things. And you'll notice that um, you know you're in masters, which is like the top four percent of player, like a low masters probably says like top four, top five percent of players, um, which means that at that point you're not making a whole lot of huge, humongous mistakes that somebody in plat would be making. But what's going to make the difference between you being masters and you being grandmasters is going to be the difference in efficiency and consistency. So consistently not making all the tiny mistakes and being more efficient with your time. So. All the tiny things will add up over time. Like all the all the tiny ones that we've talked about so far is just going to keep adding up, keep adding up, and then if you can look to get more consistent and more efficient, then that's how we look to get better at the game. Expect when you're at a high enough uh, a level like this. So again, bubble slacking a little bit now because we're coming back into the next fight as well with zero. So want to just make sure we're maintaining that energy. Good bubble there. Make sure that you're reloading every opportunity that you get, right? So, uh, or any lull in a fight where you're not actively shooting at stuff, you want to just reload so that you have ammo, right? Here we shoot, and then there's nobody. We're not shooting anybody. No one's in our line of sight. So we're at 62 ammo. We reload so that we come to 100 so that next time we can shoot at somebody, we have all of our ammo rather than just 62, which can mean the difference between securing a kill or not and outputting damage. So here we just don't reload. When she's right next to you like that, look to, or let's see, let's watch this and slow mo for a second. When Summer's right next to you like this, add in a melee. If you're, I like the the right click because we see that she's low here, but add in the melee um, as that'll help you burst her down. Now I think we, we just barely miss it because so she's still a little bit high health here, but so the melee wouldn't have killed her. But that, when you're right next to somebody, you want to just do that because that adds in um, a lot of burst damage all at once, which secures the kill fast and is always that's always gonna be better for you if you kill him faster okay so far bubbles are looking pretty inconsistent um that was unfortunate we're gonna die bubbles are looking pretty inconsistent as um we're half the t like on the first point i think they were, looked really really solid but on this point now we're struggling a lot more and i, I can only feel that because on when you're up against a dive that becomes a lot more difficult to secure energy. Um, but we still want to make sure we're focusing on it as our energy affects pretty much every single part of our kit, right? When we don't have good bubbles, we can't, we don't get energy. When we don't get energy, we don't get damage. When we don't get damage, we don't get ults, and we don't get kills. And when we don't get ults and kills, then we're not winning fights, right? So uh, us having high energy does a lot more than when we don't have energy. So we just want to make sure we're focusing on getting our energy up because... So far, that's probably the big thing that affected that fight, and it means that that's the reason why we're charging our ult so slowly in comparison to everyone else. Um, and then secondly here is pay attention to whether or not you think you can get out. Here in this situation, I'd probably say there's a very low likelihood of you being able to get away. So on Zarya, you always, you, you know, it's a good idea to try to get out because you want to keep your energy, but if, if the 
chances of you getting out are super super slim because you see that you're you don't have you can't use bubbles here and you're purple and you have three people looking at you right then if we know that our chances are super slim of getting out we probably don't want to run away because that just means that we're staggering ourselves and we're dying super late so you just kind of need to um assess the situation and go can i escape um or am i kind of stuck here um in this situation once you get purpled i'd probably be like okay i'm, I'm not getting out all right monkey dives after you we bubble all right and that just means that we end up staggering ourselves further which again you're you know masters you probably i would ass very much assume that you know what the you know what stagger means so we mm -hmm. don't want to be staggering and coming out of spawn super late because then our team's going to be just like look how far ahead of us our team is and we just waste a whole lot of time No, it's unfortunately our team's going main, but we should probably be going high ground. But if you're, but that's that's the right call. If your if your entire team's going main, we don't want to go by ourselves. But we can maybe like communicate it. Very nice grab. Very 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 nice there. I like that. Um, maybe a little bit of an early bubble though. Let's see, when, when do we use our bubble? We saw the Genji, and we bubbled ourselves when he was grabbed. So, um, I guess just, wait, wait, he's, he's on you a little bit more. Bubbles are seeming like a, a big thing that we need to work on here. Just keep in mind that bubbles are used when we know damage is coming into us, right? Um, if we're using bubble when damage is not coming, then we don't do, it literally does nothing, right? So we need to, when people are looking at us, when people are shooting at us, projectiles are really easy to get with this. Um, when Genji's on top of us, when Genji's outside of range because he's grabbed, then this bubble doesn't get us any value and it's just wasted. Um, which, like I said, we need to be putting a lot more effort into our bubbles because that's how we actually do things in comparison to sitting at zero energy the entire time, which just means we don't not aren't really able to do nearly as much. That's why on top of that, um, do, do, would you say that you one trick Zarya, you main Zarya, or would you have an, what what was your hero pool? Uh, so uh, it's it's actually a joke. Uh, I mostly do play Zarya, but. Mm -hmm. As of lately, I started playing a lot of Hog and Bull as well. All right. Well, I'd probably say Hog would you'd be a lot better off on Hog here, just because Zarya is not the best into a dive for the reason that we talked about. Of it's not very easy to get bubbles off against a dive. So this would just be a situation where you can identify that and probably you could probably swap to a Hog, and then that would also fit really well with your composition. As you, Zarya also doesn't work with your composition. Um, we're on a spam comp, and Hog is a spam character. Zarya is a brawl character. Zarya is not a spam character. So um, Hog would also just work better with your composition, as well as giving your team more crowd. Uh, see, like stun, you know, with your hook, it'd give you more health to work with. You wouldn't need to rely on energy, which, as we've seen, we've struggled a lot with just because of the comp that they're on. But if we are to stay on Zarya here, we need to make sure we're putting a lot more effort into getting good bubbles off because that's really impacting a lot of our gameplay here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Because we can try to melt. <laughs> uh, we can have the best tracking ever, and try, but we can't melt a uh, you know 1,000 HP monkey unless we have 100 energy. All right. Okay. Again, our bubble's coming when there's not really much shooting at us. Right. We so we we let's look at our bubble here in a moment. Okay, first off, when you're bubbling, look to get a little bit more aggressive, right? So when we're bubbling, we can, for example, like right here, we're behind two members of our team. If we're bubbling, we should be looking to push forwards a little bit. This way, like, we're in the front line. This makes us easier to shoot at. This makes uh, also allows us to, like, you know, shoot more while we're up here, right? So we can kind of capitalize on our aggression and use the bubble to, like, for, like get super aggressive on them. And then once we our bubble runs out, then we can look to back up behind our, our Sigma. But here you'll notice that we kind of bubble and then sit in place behind and we we kind of like sit behind our team. Right now we don't have anybody looking at us. Samra's looking at Sigma. Zarya's looking away. Monkey's looking at Kree, right? No, nobody's shooting at us, so therefore this bubble doesn't do anything. So you just want to make pay attention to, um, like this comes down to awareness of like, what is the enemy team up to, right? To that, 
so awareness, like there's a lot of different types of awareness, and this is like kind of in-game awareness of your surroundings of you know, where is the enemy team at, where are they looking, who are they shooting at, and if we have better awareness when it comes to that, we are able to make better decisions with bubbles. In general, when it comes to awareness, if we don't know what's happening around us, we're incapable of making good decisions. We can't make the decision to not bubble here if we don't see that they're not looking at us. If we see that they're looking at us, we can make the decision to bubble, but again, if we don't see that they're looking at us, we can't make that decision. So we need to be able to be aware of our surroundings. And that means paying attention, looking at the Zarya, uh, looking at the, the monkey, like looking around us, paying attention to where they're looking, who they're shooting at. And that means that our bubbles end up getting a little bit better. Now the bubble in McCree is much better than our bubble. That gets you a bunch of energy. You'll notice that, you know, on top of it, you know, bubbles doing good to get you energy. It's all tanking bubbles all, a lot of the time are also going to be a, a very, very good bubble that gets you tanking value and energy, all right? Bubble on McCree saves his life, get or at least for the moment until he gets inside the enemy team, right? Keeps him alive longer and gets you a lot of energy, right? You bubble somebody who's getting genji bladed, keeps him alive, gets you energy, and pretty much any ultimate in the game keeps keeps him alive, gets you energy. Someone gets charged, keeps him alive, get, gets energy, right? So tank, we always want to be looking for tanking bubbles whenever possible that get a lot of tanking value because that's how you get energy because that's where people are actually getting shot at and also gets the most value out of our tanking. So that, that bubble in the McCree was really good. Our own personal bubble wasn't that great though. Again, avoid the right clicks unless you see that their health bar is low. So that's again just paying attention to their health because you're it's going to be a lot of, inconsi of inconsistent damage when you're just right clicking a Zarya who's like half HP. That's not where we want to be right clicking or we want to be right clicking or like if she's 100 HP, that'd be a, that'd be different. Um, right before we died here, do we get bubble right at the end? Okay, here we got a little bit aggressive um, ahead of our tank. Keep in mind that we probably want to be a little bit behind our Sigma, not a little, not in front of him. Um, it, the exception would be if we have our bubble. Um, you can be use your. There's a lot of different things that affect your aggression, right? How aggressive are we being? How passive are we being? And one of those is our bubbles. If we have our bubble, we can be a little bit more aggressive because we have a get out of jail free card. I mean, we don't take damage. We can't get stunned. But if we don't have that, we need to be playing a little bit more passive because we don't have that same uh, get up jail free card. Oh, excuse me. I'm hiccuping a little bit there. Um, so you just have to pay attention to our bubble cooldowns and make sure we're not pushing when we don't have it. Also, just like before you die, just look to throw out your bubble on somebody. Like your projected one. But, right. After the round. My ultimate is charging. <laughs> We should get the payload moving. Barrier in place. Marked by the Titan. Yeah, so Sombra is right ahead of us right now. Um, so here we probably want to be going high ground. We keep going down main. Um, okay, what would maybe be the reason why you'd want to take high ground rather than just go down main? Uh, I mean, if you that, that was a question, but if you're if you don't want to answer the question, that's good. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed to be honest. Yeah. So I'm just gonna shush myself, you know. All right. Yeah. So here, just want to go main, be or sorry, go high ground rather than main because going main, uh, high ground gives our entire team an advantage, right? Just real quick, just three things the high ground does for you. Gives you survivability, right? You can use high ground as, oh, okay, I can't really even see anybody on low ground here, but you can use high ground as good cover You see All of high ground is cover. So if somebody's standing down here, to, we can see them, now they can't see us. They can, we can see them, now they can't see us, right? So we can use the all of high ground as cover usage. All of high ground gives you fantastic visibility. You can be over here, over here, over here, right? And you have t you can see pretty much everything. If you're on a low ground, we can't see anything anywhere over there. We can't see anything on the high ground, so it limits your visibility. And then thirdly, a lot of characters can't get too high ground easily, which increases your survivability once again. And then fourth, on top of that, like we said before, 
It also pushes them off the high ground, because if they benefit from high ground, we don't want to take away that uh, that advantage, right? We want to give that advantage to our team. So uh, spam is going to be very, very good on high ground. Our composition is going to benefit a lot from high ground, because if Hanzo, McCree, Sigma, Baptiste, and Zenyatta can sit up top on high ground and spam at them from a distance, that's exactly what we want to be looking to do. So taking high ground here is going to be very beneficial for us and our team. Um, here we're also not paying attention to where our team's trying to go, and then that means that we don't we're not there to get bubbles off. So just again, being aware of our surroundings and being aware of where our teammates are at, as well as the enemy team. Um, make sure you're not you're like kind of following your sigma around or paying attention to where he's going as well. All right, because by the time we get over to the fight, they've already got, already gotten two picks. Oh snap! I didn't mean to skip back there. I have to so close to the pot uh, the play button. Four minutes. Four minutes. Four fifty-six. All right, thank you. So yeah, just, that just comes back to awareness again. Yeah, me being absolutely brain dead. And then we shot at Urzaniata. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe the uh, the red, uh, our us being red team confused us in game. Tracking right there. Alright, okay, so we finally take high ground. And none of our team is with us. Um <laughs> This is actually funny. Holy shit. <laughs> I love this. Get in there. Alright. <laughs> All right, let's see how we use grab. We have nothing to combo with it, so probably just want to use it early in the next fight. Yeah, I, 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 just in general, I, I think I'm noticing just like an overuse of right clicks. It, it seems to be happening, like probably a majority of the time. I probably say it's gonna be more situational, maybe more split, like towards like fifty fifty, where you're using each of them. But we seem to be like kind of prioritizing right clicks and using it like sixty forty, um, and using right clicks a lot more often. So just look to tone that back a little bit. Look for it in the right situations to use it, not just using it all the time. Alright, um, I want to see the next grab, and then after the next grab, we'll do a quick strength swing. This is kind of what we're looking at so far, in terms of what needs to be worked on the most. Okay, um, again, when we're, when we're bubbling, make sure people are looking at them, um, make sure people are actively shooting at them, right? So here, sorry, is on him, but he runs around the corner, so now there's... Uh, from his perspective, um, you know, there's not a whole lot they can shoot at him. There's a Genji can shoot at him, but Genji's not on top of him, and uh, he's not really doing much to shoot at him. So I think, I guess, bubbling him could be helpful just to get him back to us, but there's also a shield in the way now, so um, maybe the better bubble would have just been to see, do they dive him? Because if the monkey and the Genji decide to just in on the Zenyatta, then that would be a fine bubble, but here there's a shield in the way. He's almost back to your team, so just, again, pay attention to, you know, are who can actively shoot at this person because that comes down to awareness that comes down to paying attention to like our bubble usage because again it's just a bubble that doesn't get any value and then we come into the next fight at 14 in energy all right 
So that's fine. Then we're holding on to Grav till now because we've just kind of been winning every fight so far. But we're coming in. We have a high noon we can combo it with. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. So uh, we can look to make sure we're calling that out in chat. We can bubble the, the McCree if he goes for it. Um, just want to maybe communicate that so we can get off a good combo. The same way you'd call that combo it with Tracer Pulse or Baptiste uh, Window. Okay. Um, make sure that when we're using Grav that it's in a place that our team can actually capitalize on it. Right here, the only person on our team, like we have two people who can shoot at this, maybe three if Tracer comes. Right, McCree can't see this too well. Zenyatta and Bap can't see it too well. Right, Sigma can look at it. Tracer could go get to it if she blinked over, but that just be in a. It's it basically just in general, this isn't really the best place to be grabbing because it's so. Um, close to their spawn and we don't have our team to back us up so again that means that we have to be aware of where's our team at right are they in position to shoot at this are they able to follow up on it so grabbing instead might have been better if we like grabbed right as they came out like right here or right over here because then this is visible for the for everybody right not just us and on top of that we also have to be like this is more acceptable like if maybe if we had 100 energy because then we can just kill that ourselves right we don't need any team follow-up but when we're at 18 energy we have to rely on the team follow-up because we're definitely not going to be able to kill anything on our own with 18 energy right this becomes a little bit more acceptable with 100 but just maybe a little miss time with the grab um use it a little bit when they're more out in the open all right because she gets okay so anna gets killed by tracer but that's just one kill um All right, so that, that was a problem with crap. All right, what are the what, what's the likelihood that we get out here? <laughs> not not very 100%. much. <laughs> All right, so um, quick strengths and weaknesses, kind of what I'm looking at so far in terms of like kind of five different categories in the game so far with ability usage. I say bubbles need a lot more work, though. Of course, um, this is a very difficult like we talked about before. It's a very difficult comp to get energy from. It's also just needing to be a, a, put a lot more attention into our bubbles because a lot of them are just being wasted. Um, so bubble usage need a lot of work. Um, ultimates I've only seen two so far. The first one was really fantastic. We got it on the Nanoblade and Genji. The second one, um, and I also like that we didn't like misuse it. Um, like we we didn't didn't ult in lost fights. We didn't ult in one fights. And then in this fight we look to use it early in the fight, so I like that, but you just want to make sure you're not using it too early. Um, ults that are used early are you typically going to get more value than ults that are used late, but at the same time, you don't want to use it so early that our team re can't really capitalize on it, so there we just wanted to we may, like, you know, be aware of our team and them, so that that one's, I need to see more ults because uh, I've only seen two so far, but that one's looking maybe a little bit inconsistent, but not definitely not the worst uh, thing I've seen so far, unless that just continues to be bad but um moving on mechanics um there's not really much I, i'd probably say like the only thing with mechanics that i'm noticing so far is just the difference between left click and right click tracking is i probably say a little bit better than that like it's, it's okay it's good it's not terrible it's not fantastic but that's just something that comes from playing the game and getting more consistent at it and practicing and learning the muscle memory. Uh, when it comes to just flat out tracking, there's not a whole lot that um, I can do as a coach to just say, hey, track better like this. Um, I can give you, if you were interested in that, I can like real quick link you like a uh, IDD QD talking about practicing tracking. But besides that, uh, tracking is going to be something that just comes a lot from practice and learning at it. So, in, but besides that, tr mechanics again, maybe more in like the medium category of things. It's not too good, not too terrible, right? Just, just good. Um, then, uh, let me get this um, IDD QD vid real quick, and then I'll move on. All right, one second. All right, so then I just linked that to you in Discord. Now moving on from there to positioning. I think so far positioning has been, I, I'd probably say I put that a little bit higher than than the um, ultimate and tracking cat and mechanics category as positioning has resulted in a couple different deaths and a couple different uh, kind of mistakes. So particularly kind of, 
where we're lo looking to approach the fight. Uh, for example, like we didn't take high ground a lot of the time, and we've been split up from our team a couple times, and we also have had times where we've pushed ahead of our uh, Sigma, or that uh, particularly one time where we pushed ahead of our Sigma and then died as a result. So um, just want to make sure we're not doing that, and we're trying to stick a little bit further back. Um, then on top of that, just in general, keep in mind, I don't think it's too much of an issue, but just as a quick reminder, you know, if we're standing on the open, that's bad. Good positioning is the usage of cover because if we're next to an object, we can go like this, boom, they can't see us, boom, they can't see us, right, in half of a second. Whereas if we're all the way over here, it takes us a couple seconds to get behind cover. We have to go one, two, three, two and a half, right, um, before we get behind cover, which just means that we die in that meantime. So we want to make sure that we're positioning next to cover. Moving on to awareness. I think awareness is probably going to be one of the ones that I probably say awareness and bubble usage looking like they're topping the charts right now of the things that need to be worked on the most. Um, with awareness being a problem, particularly in in game, because there's a lot, like I said before, there's a lot of different types of awareness. You have HUD awareness. So far, I don't think we have a, too much of a problem with HUD awareness. Um, that would just be like paying attention to your bubbles, your uh, ult charge, your health. No problem with that. You have kill th kill feed awareness. I don't think we have a problem with that so far, and I've never, I haven't seen us make a mistake on that yet. Um, and then I pro but you also have in-game awareness of like, where's my team? Where's the enemy team at? Where are they positioned? And that's, I'd probably say, would be the biggest part of awareness that we're struggling with, is that it's led to a lot of mistakes in our positioning, in our decision-making, on when we're doing what, on our bubbles, on where we're, we're going, because we've separated ourselves from our team a lot. Um, so that that's probably just going to be one of the big ones. Besides that, you have audio awareness, not too much of an issue for you. You have um, health bar awareness, which that one I would say as well, pay attention to that, as that will dictate whether or not you're right-clicking or left-clicking, all right? Um, and who you're focusing and whatnot, so just pay attention to health bars as well. And then you have alt awareness, which, not, uh, I mean, unless you wanted to go over, like, alt tracking and planning and stuff like that, not really too much of an issue we need to worry about. Um, so I'm going to rewatch this. How we, how do we get the McCree bubbled here? I think we were aiming at Sigma. That was supposed to go for Sigma. Yeah. Because yes. you got hacked and I wanted to, to prevent that. But... Oh, right. Overwatch is good again. <laughs> uh, have you lowered your bubble sensitivity at all? Uh, I think it's actually 100. 100? Okay, well then I would recommend lowering that. Are you aware of what that does? Uh, not, not really sure, I just kept it by right. default most of the time. Yeah, so projected barrier sensitivity, um, what that does is it means when it's at 10, it means that it l you have to literally be aiming on top of them, like within their hitbox, to, for it to land. If that's at 100, then it is very unspecific and goes to whatever's closest to you, and it is not close, your, it doesn't go to where your crosser's at, right? Um, so I would recommend putting that more within like the 50 to 80 range as that allows you to be more targeting with where your bubble's trying to go and allows you for in this instance your crosshair is very much more so uh, very much more towards the sigma than it is the mccree right but since mccree is closer to you at 100 barrier sensitivity that would go to mccree whereas if you had this a little bit lower that it would you'd have a higher chance of this going to the sigma just because your crosshair is closer to sigma so um, you don't want to, of course, you don't want to lower that to 10 because it, that makes it very, very difficult to land the bubble. You'd have to be literally staring directly at Sigma for it to land. But lowering that a little bit is going to make it so that you're not having your bubble stolen from you as often. And you can pick out who you're trying to hit. But in any case, I got to use some energy. Make sure we're looking to use our own personal bubble. Like to, whenever we're out of energy, right? The number one thing on our mind is getting energy, right? Because like we've talked about, energy is important, right? Because we can't do anything without it. So we want to make sure that we're prioritizing getting it back. So here, for example, like when we're just kind of walking walking into this fight, we can like get super aggressive, stand like right here, stand still, right? Let make it super easy for them to all shoot at us. They shoot at us, we bubble. 
we get energy, we back off into the room, right? Or something like that, where we're just getting, we get aggressive, make it super, we stand still, make it super easy for them to hit us. And then we back off when the bubble's broken. But instead we like don't use our bubble at all here for like a good, like the fight, we could be using a bubble like starting now and we don't use our bubble for like one, two, three, four, Five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine. Okay, so we could have had like two bubbles in during that time, right? One at, one super early in the fight, one at this point, right? So we just want to make sure we're using it. Like that's the same thing with like our projected bubbles. At the very beginning of fights, you can use them like right as the poke phase is starting when both teams are just shooting at each other from a distance because you're going to get another round of bubbles by the time the fight starts and you want to get your energy up high. Um, whereas here we don't use our bubble and then ju that just means that we are charging it up later and we, we have to put m more of an emphasis on the energy. Whereas hopefully the plant, like if this was a perfect fight, we would be coming in at like 80 energy and then every bubble we're using is just for tanking and we're not using it for energy, right? Once you're high energy, you don't need to think about energy anymore. Once you're like about, once you're like 70 plus or something like that, you don't really need to think about your energy. You just need to think about using it for tanking. And that means that's a, that's a little bit of a difference in how you're using your bubbles. So that would be like the perfect scenario. Here, if we're coming into this fight and we're still 30 energy or 40 energy, we need to be now thinking about energy still, which isn't something we want to be doing if the fight's starting. Okay, uh, make sure we're probably positioning ourselves a little bit closer to the fight if we see that we're the fight's starting here. So what happens here is... Oh, snap, I skipped a little bit too far back here. So right around here, when you see your Sigma start to push forwards, right? And the monkey's backing out and he's low. Your Sigma starts to push forwards. We should probably be, like, inching for. We should probably be, like, on this corner while we're bubbling him because we are a close range character as Zarya. That's why you're a brawl, a brawl character. Um, Zarya doesn't prefer long ranges because she doesn't want to be a right click bot. Um, because like we talked about, left click's just more efficient. So Zarya prefers close ranges. That's why typically she works best in a brawl composition like with Reinhardt because she likes close and she likes fast. She doesn't like slow and she doesn't like far. Um, when it, as far as her playstyle is concerned. So here we're just sitting a little bit far back here, whereas preferably we'd be a lot closer so that when we want to push, so here we could probably left click and beam the Zarya down, but we, we could also be a lot closer when we're actually trying to push into the fight and Sigma's pushing forwards. We also kind of see that Sigma's pushing forwards a little bit late here because we look over the at the McCree and then by the time we look back, McCree, like Sigma's all the way up there. So we, we, we notice here that we're just lagging behind when the fight's starting because preferably here if we were all the way up here and we like did a quick flick back shot mccree and then walked forwards here we would be within range to capitalize on this right but now since we're so far away it's kind of like the grab that you used earlier is that sigma's fluxing and none of his teammates can help and capitalize on it none of his teammates are able to shoot at it and that's gonna stem from our positioning because we're not positioning close enough we're just positioning too far here Right, so we're not, they get, they'll get half, but we're like too far away to do anything. Right, good target priority there. But probably look to finish off the Ana. Alright. Yeah, you just need to pay attention to people's health bars a little bit better because a lot of the times just right clicks end up coming out a little bit too early when they're not low enough to, for it to kill them. And then that just results in them being like still low, but we have to beam them down. So it's just a little bit inefficient and it doesn't seem like we're, we have a good grasp on like when is my right click going to kill them. The other thing here is that like we're just low energy so that we have to, you know, when, when we're at 100 energy, they can be more like half HP when they're, when we're at 34 energy. They have to be a little bit more like a fourth HP for that right click to kill them. So we just have to pay attention to that difference in our energy 
as well as their what where their health bar is at because that seems to be happening quite frequently where like we're right clicking on somebody who's not going to die to it Ooh, that was a nice fadeaway shot. Alright. So picked it up a little bit in that last fight. Okay. Again, another comp that Zarya doesn't really prefer. Um, and we'd be much better off on like a character like Roadhog here. Or even Ball if you wanted to, but they had a Sombra. So I, I would completely understand not wanting the ball into a Sombra. Um, but again, we are running a full-on spam comp are you aware of like of the compositions like the three compositions of the game you have spam brawl and dive are, are you familiar with the three comps yep yep so in this comp right we're running a full spam pre spam torb spam zen spam bap spam arisa spam zarya's brawl right so we're just kind of the odd one out yeah. here and on top of that zarya arisa isn't really a good combo at all because you know Ar arisa has zero reason ever to be peeking past their shield <laughs> and really nobody has any reason to ever go past the shield which means that your projected barrier is going to be getting a lot less value right now of course we can walk past the shield and, and bubble ourselves but you know like on a reinhardt he has to swing which drops the shield and therefore bubbles good on sigma he's going to be dropping it quite frequently and whatnot so it's okay on him but arisa like very rarely is she gonna like be like walk like have a shield up and then walk past it so it's just not a good combo as well on that end so just in, in general hog here again would be another good uh, good pick to consider Okay, um, here, you know, projectiles are pretty easy to, to bubble. So, for example, here when the Echo shoots in some some stickies, look at where are these stickies going? Do they damage anybody? No, they don't. Okay, but it, so it didn't actually get anybody, but we didn't seem to be looking at it very much, which could be a good bubble if it had landed on something. Oh. That was pretty good, but I think we might have backed up a little bit too early there. We kind of start the backup as we were. Uh, I guess let, let's we can kind of rewatch this real quick, but I, I think we might have start, started backing up slightly too early. So we bubble. We still have 400 HP, All right? We bubble, and then we start backing up while our bubble's still on. So we're around the corner when bubble's still on for another second or half or so and that just means that that's a little bit of bubble that we waste so we just want to make sure we're sticking for that full duration okay um it seems that we like to swap around targets a lot look to stick on something so here for example like we could probably just push this and kill like the zenyatta for example but we we shoot at the zenyatta we probably could we have bubble available we're not low at all it's only the the supports and that's it right we could probably like push forwards a little bit and just melt the the zenyatta but then we swap to the ana which i probably would go for the zenyatta or over the ana just because he doesn't have self nade he is gonna be is gonna be a little bit harder for a Ana to heal a Zenyatta than a Zenyatta is to heal an Ana, right? Zen has orb, which is super easy to land, whereas Ana has to land skill shots, right? So in general, Zenyatta is just the easier character to kill. On top of that, actually, did his nerfs went through, right? Do you, do you remember? Yep. Yeah, I did. Okay, so he's not the best character in the game anymore, but um, he's still probably pretty decent, I would imagine. So um, killing Zenyatta here would just be super easy to do. But we we kill him and then swap over the Yana, which instead, like, look at the if both of those damages like were combined into one, that would now mean that he's like half HP, right? So we just kind of split that damage there, which means that we're killing things slower, and then we shoot at the Yana for a little bit and then back off when we're not really pressured at all. So we probably could have torn up their backline if he just stayed there a little bit longer, and I don't know if we had a reason to back up to point. Um, so just keep staying there and pressuring them and killing the Zenyatta and the Ana, because we might have even been able to kill both of them if we didn't get contested at all there. Um, yet we back up here to come back, 
and then we didn't really accomplish anything. So just make sure we're trying to not keep swapping targets and go going back and forth. Monkey, Soldier, Ana, or Zenyatta, Ana, right? Focus on one thing unless you see a better opportunity so that you can melt that thing down and kill it. Because if we're constantly swapping around, we're not going to be able to focus anything down and kill it. All right, um, so let's rewatch this real quick. Come on. I just want to rewatch this and see, like, what, why do we die here? So you got to pick. We kill one soldier. Um, I think we get maybe a little bit too aggressive off of one single pick. They still have five people alive. And look at our positioning as we push really, really far away from cover. And that's probably get what kills us here, right? Remember, good positioning is each usage of cover, bad positioning is the absence of cover. If we wanted to push the Zenyatta here, maybe wrapping around the boxes would have been slightly better because then we have this as cover right there. And then we can back up to over here if we need to or something like that. But we kind of are out in the open. And that means that when we try to run back to cover, we have to backtrack through the open, which just means that we get ourselves killed. Um, and then on top of that, we maybe just get a little too aggressive, like when our teams back. I don't know. I don't know why Arissa backed up. Um, she probably should have stayed up to help you out. That's kind of some team, like team synergy stuff. But we get melted because of the fact that we push forwards when we didn't really. I probably didn't have enough of a pick to push forwards. Like we had one single kill. A lot of the times, one pick is an advantage, but it's not. Doesn't like you know mean that you've won the fight. And that was just a little bit too aggressive positioning in comparison to our team. All right, so we're on the hog now. Watch the health bar because it maybe wasn't necessary to use the cooldown when we were when we we're just down like, well, were we down like 60 HP? Yeah, that was uh, that was my bad. Yeah, so you said when we were down like 60 HP, which uh, you know you might want to you might need that within the next like uh, to eight seconds. So just maybe don't not you might want to use it if you're down like a hundred like a hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Not when you're down just 60. Because now that's a situation. Now right, this is, right now is a situation where it just could have been better used. Okay, put a lot of effort into your hooks. Kind of same thing as bubbles. It's a very very massive part of your kit, and landing good ho hooks is going to secure your kills. So make sure putting a lot more attention and effort into our hooks, as it seems so far, kind of with our hooks, um, on the two that we've whiffed, it's kind of like a rushed hook. We kind of like turn the corner and then instantly do it. It's just it's just like snap, we're doing it right. Whereas what it should look like is more like it's a setup period where we're where we're taking a couple seconds to look for it. We're shooting, we're shooting on like we're just kind of spam shotting, shoot, shoot, shoot. Shoot, and they're like, okay, finally, I see a hook. We're going for it, right? But it kind of like we turn the corner and then hook immediately, right? It just doesn't seem like it's very planned. It doesn't seem like it's very intentional. And then we do it again in a moment here. We're going we're gonna to get our hook back. Be back up here. And then we turn the corner. And then we just hook again immediately, right? It. We just want to put intentionality into our hooks. We want to put effort and thought into it. And in general, like, that's, that's how we're going to look to improve at anything we're trying to work on. So for we put intentional in. Uh, we intentionally think about it and put focus into the thing we're trying to work on. We don't autopilot. We don't just focus on winning. The way that we improve is to focus on the things we're trying to work on. So, for example, while we're playing, our mind should look like, if we're trying to focus on and improve on hooks, we'd, our mind would look like, hook, 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 right? We're constantly giving ourselves a reminder. We're really, really focusing in on our hook usage. And you'll notice that when you're really, really focusing in on something, you're going to start to do a little bit better at it because you're thinking about it. And 
then if you do that for a long enough period of time, it develops as habit and muscle memory, and therefore, you no longer have to put as much time, effort, and thought and focus into it, and therefore, you can put that same amount of focus and effort into something else and move on to something else. Now, you don't want to do that for everything. We've talked about like 20 different things. You don't want to talk focus on all 20 of the things at once because that's going to get overwhelming but focus on like one category or like three smaller things uh, or like you know it doesn't have to be three but one one to three smaller things um just make sure we're focusing and we're not just autopiloting because so far abilities have been pretty auto like just kind of the, the vibe i get from them is autopiloty where we just don't really think too much about how we're using our abilities and therefore we just end up whiffing them a lot of the times with both with bubbles and hooks all right, um, now we are going to head into kind of the um, wrap up and kind of we're going to go over all the, the main points and do a quick review over everything we've talked about. And then from there, we'll just wrap it up. So to start us off, we'll just go through to abilities to start off. So on Zarya, bubbles are a big thing. Um, probably say really important to work on put a lot of thought and attention and effort into it when you're using personal bubble look to put get a little bit aggressive with it right so when we're you know we're trying to use our own bubble we don't kind of bubble and then back around the corner halfway through um, we don't move around what we want to do is we push up a little bit this way we can both do extra damage but then also force them to look at us we push past the shields we push past our team we bubble we stand still for a little bit while we're shooting and then as the bubble's about to end we back up around the corner right we're not backing up too early we're not we're not moving around to make it hard for them to shoot us unless we're trying to use bubble for tanking like if we're trying to use our bubble to stay alive then we might we still want to strafe around but if we're using bubble for for energy and we're trying to get them to purposefully shoot at us make it easy for them to shoot at you um whereas a lot of times it feels like we're making it a chore for them to shoot at us which just means we're getting less energy um just on top of that make sure people are actually looking at you as you're looking to use your bubbles right um make sure that you're paying attention and this comes into at awareness but pay attention to where's our team where's the enemy team is the enemy team looking at our at us are they shoot who are they shooting at who are they looking at and then that'll allow us to make, get better bubbles off look to bubble when you know you're getting shot at or your teammates getting shot at right um now that's pretty much it bubbles is just a big big thing to work on as it was very inconsistent um, and then on top of that, if you feel like you're up against, like, a dive comp, it's very difficult to land bubbles against, and that just may be a comp that you want to swap to, like, a Roadhog, just because bubbles are going to be hard to get against that composition. Um, now moving on to ults. I didn't see too many ults. I think I, in that entire game, I only saw two, maybe three. Um, but the ults I did see were, look slightly inconsistent, so it's not going to be, since I didn't see too many of them, it's not going to be super good or super bad. I'd probably say, like... Just a l the only problem with it was that we just kind of used it when our team wasn't able to capitalize. Like, if our entire team's over here, and we bubble grab something over there, then we're the only thing that can shoot at it. Or, if And if we don't have any energy, it's going to be very hard to get that kill. Right? So, if you have more energy, you can do a little bit more of an isolated grab. If you don't have energy, you need your team support and paying attention to where your team's at. Besides that, no real other problems with our grabs usage. So, honestly, pretty low on the list of things to work on. Um, mechanics, make sure that you're right-clicking and left-clicking at the right times. So far, it looks like right-click kind of is coming out 60% of the time, and left-click is like 40% of the time. Looks to get that more towards like 50-50-ish, um, as they both have their particular uses, and they're going to be happening at different times. All right, whenever you're in within range of your left-click, look to left-click, because it's more consistent for damage in general. Right-click, you're using it when you're outside of that range, Right, and we're using it, um, it to burst something down. So also pay attention to health bars. Is it we kind of like we'll shoot somebody and they'll be like right here, and then we'll right click, and then they'll still have health left, and we're like, huh, oh, they still have health. I have to shoot them. All right. So instead, make sure we're paying attention to their health bar and we're shooting them when that right click's gonna kill them. All right, not too early. That's gonna be that that bar is gonna be higher and higher when we have more energy. Like we could probably like one shot with like a right click melee at that health if we were high energy um so just pay attention to your energy as well pay attention to the health bar um and then if you're close enough you can go into a right click melee if you're too far away um like if you're at this distance then right clicking probably isn't gonna be worth it because it no longer acts as a burst as it has travel time if it has too much travel time it's not gonna be fast damage you might as well just finish beaming them down right because if it's you if you're right clicking from all the way over here it's no longer a fast kill which is why you want the burst damage in the first place um, 
Now moving on to positioning. Make sure that you're not out in the open, right? If we're standing up here, this is bad positioning because it takes us one, two, three seconds to get behind cover, right? Now we're safe. This is good positioning because we can just go like this and now they can't see us. All right, you have a lot of different things. You have pillars, corners, objects that you can find, right? There's high grounds all act as an actual cover, but we want to look to utilize that. On top of it, make sure you're sticking with your team and you're paying attention to them. And unless you're bubbling yourself, don't walk ahead of your other tank. Um, or unless like you have a reason to, like you're you're winning in a fight and you can get away with it. Like if you have a big advantage, then that's fine, right? Um, but just in general, you want to stick behind your tanks. Look to take high grounds a lot more often. And when it's an option, it's they're really, really great for you um, and your team. And also, it's good for the enemy team too, so look to take it away from them. You have a lot of benefits and advantages that come out of high ground usage, so look to take that advantage for you and your team. Um, uh, well, what else did we talk about? Just pay attention to your team, pay attention to the enemy team, make sure you're not running off on your own, and you're not standing in bad positioning. Awareness. Um, two main categories here that we're looking at are, um, paying attention to those around us, right? Paying attention to where is our team, where is the enemy team, as, uh, because that affected a whole lot of decision making, and a whole, it resulted in a whole lot of mistakes, and a whole lot of bad bubbles, and a whole lot of, you know, that's it. <laughs> I don't know why I said it, you know? Um, so just make sure we're focusing on our, where the enemy team is, where our team is. Don't just kind of walk around staring straight forwards, looking at your crosshair, doing a slow pan. We want to look, make sure we're paying attention to our surroundings. Look left, look right, do a 360 once in a while, especially if we're about to like push somewhere, like if we're about to walk forwards into them, check, is our team here with me or where are they at? Where are they going? All right. Besides that, pay attention to health bars and pay attention to what was the other thing? Um, HUD doesn't need it. Watch your energy level though. Um, pay attention to you when you have your abilities as that affects your aggression. Um, don't need to pay attention to kill feed at all. Don't need to pay attention to ults. Don't need to pay attention to audio awareness. So I think that those are the two main things um, is where players are at and their health bars. Right? And then on hog, only thing would be just ability usage again. Make sure we're not... Uh, that, that's really the only difference. I never got to see us use an ult. Um, good mechanics from what I saw in the, like, the one minute I watched you on. But make sure we're putting a lot of intentionality and effort into our hook usage. So that we're landing good hooks. Um, and then with our health, make sure we're not healing when we're just down like 60 HP. So we're kind of getting max value out of it. Um, and then that's pretty much it on hook. So main points across everything. Number one, I'm probably going to put out ability usage, as that was kind of a big overlying issue on both characters that we played. Um, number two, I'm going to put at awareness, as that affected some of our, a lot of our decision making and our ability usage and our gameplay. Number three is going to be at what where we have left. We have mechanics, positioning, and um, missing one right now in my head. We already talked. We already did awareness. Okay, and then ultimate usage. So, um, probably say number three is going to come in at positioning. Number four is going to come in at mechanics, and then number five is going to come in at, at ultimate usage. Mainly because I just didn't see is too many. But on top of that, besides like one tiny mistake with the, the grab, or I guess it wasn't tiny, but one mistake with the grab, it seemed pretty good on how we we're using them. So, um, that's just how ults you looked so do you have any questions about anything we've gone over as of now no i actually understand a bit more or at least about zarya in general so i should be good hopefully right. i can get back into form who knows yeah sounds good all right so i'm just